Glory to God. Open your Bible this morning to Isaiah chapter 63. And we'll just start this message from there. It hadn't intended to do that until this morning, but uh, it's, it's all part of the same theme that I'm working with today. But, <coughs> excuse me, the title of the message is lying. Just, just lying. It'd be part two. And from what I'm seeing, we may go to a part three of this, but we're certainly, I think, going to go into the subject of truth, which is opposite to lying. Okay? Because I can type in lying into, into the computer, and whew, man, page after page after page in there of, uh, of verses of Scripture that addresses the subject of lying. And then you can switch over and just type in the word truth. And here you've got gobs of pages where the word truth is being uh, spoken of and talked about. And so we may cover both of those aspects of this particular thought. But this morning in, in Isaiah chapter 63, <clears throat> I looked at this verse and I thought, Lord, where is Newton County? The whole county needs to be here. They need to see this verse. <laughs> verse 7 in Isaiah chapter 63. The prophet said, I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. Does your Bible say that? Yes. The loving kindness of the Lord. It doesn't say I will mention the meanness, hatefulness, and aggravating ways of God. <laughs> it doesn't say that. No. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord. And the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord had bestowed on us. God has God has God bestowed any good things on your life? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it merits, it calls for, it begs yeah. for our praises to Him and our gratitude and our thankfulness to Him. Sure. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel. Well, He's done great goodness to the Johnson house. I don't know how it is to everybody else's house. God has just been flat good to me. Yes. Amen. In spite of myself. Amen. He just can't help Himself because that's just the way He is. You know? mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he had bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. That's just an awesome loaded verse. You know that? If we just spend a little time doing nothing else but just reading that verse 7, you know, throughout the week and just sit down and just take a couple minutes. It don't take very long to read that. And just let that talk to you again and again and again. It'll really, it'll really change your life. But we read that just to get to verse 8. For he said, Surely... He's talking about blessing these people, you know, his people. For, for he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie. Glory to God. That's the children God's trying to develop, create, have, make, want, desire. He said, listen, here, here, here's how I am to you in verse 7. And he said, verse 8 is how I'd like for you to be to me. Children that will not lie. Amen. There's a verse I don't have in front of me. I, we've looked at that many times in the past. So it says, Trust in the Lord, and verily thou shalt be fed. Y'all remember reading that or hearing that? Yes. Trust in the Lord, and verily you have no need to lie. Trust in the Lord, and verily, truly, it's what the word verily means. You'll have no need to tell a lie. Because God's going to take care of you. He's already made arrangements, plans, means, established everything you have need of. And all you got to do is just seek Him a little bit. Just press into him a little bit. But he said, verse 8, Surely they, they are my people. It begs the question, and then it says, Children, are you his people? Are you a child of God? And if you really want to be one of them, just do whatever it takes on your part to not lie. Amen. Just don't tell a lie. Glory to God. Telling a lie is man's efforts to do a miracle. I mean, they told us in Bible school that... that Getting in a hurry and driving real fast down the highway is man's effort, to, the natural effort of man to do a miracle. Why don't we just tell the truth and watch God fix what apparently looks bad and just tell the truth about it and go on you know, and let Him. God works with truth. He works with truth. And so we just tell the A lie is always something in the dark. It's always, it's come from darkness, come from the father of lies, but it come out of darkness, and it's part of that darkness, and it just belongs in darkness. And if anything is in darkness, listen guys, the devil's got it. If any, anything that is in spiritual darkness, Satan is in control of it. Well, truth is all about what's over here in the light, and the devil ain't coming into the light. No. The devil ain't going to come out in the light. He don't want the light. <laughs> they talk about it on the, on the news quite a bit. The sunshine sanitizes everything. And what they're talking about is all this corruption and stuff in, in government and politicians, that sort of thing. When it gets exposed, it sanitizes the moment. The exposure does. Well, just bring your life over into the light of the gospel and, and let that light shine on your life. And the devil won't come there. He's going to come out into that. Glory to God. 
But I just wanted you to see children that will not lie, so he was their savior. Do you want Jesus to be your savior? Yes, <laughs> Everybody does, you know. And then they just, uh, uh, you know, go to church and they you know, go through the motions and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, I guess trying to convince other people that they're a child of God and, and maybe in their own heart they think they are. But listen, if we live a lying life, you know, I don't think Jesus is your savior. Just live a lying life. And some people just have seem to have a spirit of lying, a lying spirit about them. I don't know. It's kind of like that lady up in Lebanon, Missouri. We mentioned that last Sunday, I think it was. But I just went in to get a cup of coffee like 2.30 in the morning. I'm tired. I just want to drop off the radar here and just rest a minute. I'm just tired driving that truck. And while I'm sitting there at the counter drinking that coffee, these two waitresses are behind the counter just talking to one another. And she said, I think she said, she said it was her husband. He'd rather climb a, 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 I think she said a telephone pole or a highline pole. She said, she, he'd rather climb a highline pole to, and, and tell a lie and stand on the ground and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. lied like a dog. I heard somebody else said something. Same statement. He said he'd rather climb a thorn tree and tell a lie and stand on the ground and tell the truth. Hallelujah. Just don't lie, guys. Just don't tell no lie. Just be honest about it. Whatever it is. Whatever the subject is. Somebody said, did you do that? And they'll just frown at you like you're going to get myrtleized. And just say, yeah, I did that. I was on the school board in Mount Judy several years ago. And uh, there was something, I don't remember what the subject was, that uh, on this board there's a president, president of the board, I think there's a vice president of the board, I don't know, has it, you know, a secretary and all that sort of thing. And the president of the board, he has the voice. And make sure everything goes the way he or try to get everything go the way he wants it to go. Of course, you can do whatever you want to. I mean, you got to vote on it, and you just vote everyone you want to. But there was something that I did. I don't know uh, uh, that uh, uh, was contrary to his way of thinking. It's a pretty serious move I made. I don't even know what it was now, but it, I just remember it was kind of a rough deal on the president's ears. What it was I did. He didn't like it. Well, he thought somebody else on that board had did what, whatever that problem was. And he turned around and he just got real narrowly on the face and frowned and real grump said, did you do that? Pointed this other guy. I saw the just dropped his head up and he said, nope, nope. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> just like he scolded a little child the way he was acting. I said, no, he didn't do that. I did it. <laughs> just shocked the day out of that little president guy. He got up, walked around, went outside, come back in, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> Just because somebody's acting like the world's going to pass away because of what you did, tell the truth. I said, no, he didn't do that. I did it. I said, I'll do it again. <laughs> I think I told him I'll do it again. I'll get a chance. <laughs> <laughs> We're people of God. I don't think the devil's great hard to push anybody around. You know that? Amen. I'm a child of God or I'm not. Holy Ghost is in me or he's not. Hallelujah. God's with me or he's not. Amen. If I'm in a confrontational moment, me and God, God's in that moment with me. Yes. And if the truth don't work, I need to just keep quiet and go to the house or something. I don't know. I just, I just, that was just a moment that I had. That, you know, this other individual, he just humped up like a little whip pup. said, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Well, he was part of the moment that I had created, but he wasn't the one who initiated it. Anyway, just want y'all to see that verse, verse 8. Children that will not lie, and so God is their Savior. I want the Lord to be my Savior, don't Amen. you? Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As we speak on, in other parts of the world, I think, as we speak according to the news that we hear from time to time, that there are Christians that are being confronted by the devil-minded people out there telling them, you, you renounce this Christ, are you a Christian or not? And they're faced with that. And, and the outcome of that is, if you say you are, you die. And so they're intimidated by the statement. People who love their Lord. People who are committed to their God. People who will not lie. Verse 8 said, they will not lie. They say, yeah, I'm a Christian. And more times than not, they die. But the Bible says they get a better resurrection. You read it in the chapter of Hebrews, 12th chapter, I think, maybe it's, I don't know, there's somewhere in that area. They get a better resurrection. Yes. Just tell the truth, folks. Just don't lie. Income tax time, tell the truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. James chapter 3. We're going, I'm, not, I'm just warming up here. I ain't getting time. 
really got into the message yet. Look at James chapter 3. Hallelujah. I know James is in my Bible. I've seen it before. I get to hunt chapters and verses and they hide on me for some reason. There it is. James chapter 3. I hear what <laughs> it gets brought down a little closer to home where we live at this, this particular verse. Third, third chapter of James, verse 14. He said, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, don't glory about it. He said, lie not against the truth. Lie not against the truth. Do you know church houses are full of born-again people who lie against the truth every day? Not in this church, but a lot of churches. Because you asked them, are you healed? No, I ain't healed. They just lied against the truth. Amen. Because the truth says they are. Right, the truth says a whole lot of things about you and I, and the church world is lying about it. Well, they don't do it consciously, but nonetheless, they're lying. Look at, look at John 17, 17, just to kind of make the point, I think. John 17, 17. Brother Copeland's mother, <laughs> Kim Copeland got to, him, to his mother to pray for him, and he was telling her how sick he was and how bad off he was and because he wanted her to really pray just so if she knew how bad off he was she would really put her heart into the prayer and she listened to that and she, she, she said well you tell me the truth in his mind he said well I thought I just did I just told you the truth I mean I'm sick I'm hurting my doctor said I can't live and yada, 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 you know. and she listened to that and she said now listen I told you tell me, you tell me the truth now you tell me the truth well, I'm not lying to you. I mean, I'm, he told her the whole how sick, sorry situation he was in again. And that got pitched back a time or two. <laughs> Brother Cope said, my mother grabbed him by the both of the pail and uh, shook him and shook him till his eyeballs crossed. She said, I told him, you to tell me the truth. And the truth is, you're a heel, Mother Straps. And Jesus, you tell me the truth. <laughs> a little act come on, you know. <laughs> Boy, yeah, in Jesus' name, I'm healed by his stripes. I need have you found John chapter 17? Amen. Verse 17. If you can remember the chapter, you can remember the verse. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Amen. And we read in James chapter 3, lie not against the truth. Because if you lie against the truth, you're lying against the word. And to lie against the word is to point your finger in God's face and say, God, I know what you said, but you're lying. Nobody would consciously do that. But they do it every day of the world. How you doing? Well, I'm just barely making it. We can't afford. There ain't no way. That's impossible. And all the while, the Bible says just the opposite of all those thoughts. Amen. That's right. Lie not against the truth. God's looking for a people that will not lie. Amen. And some people that won't lie that he can get involved in and show how to show himself strong in their life. Amen. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. I mean, those are a couple of verses that I think about just quite often. I mean, not even where a message is concerned, the minister. I just be standing around looking way awesome and I'll think of these verses. Children that will not lie. Amen. And lie not against the truth. Well, the, the, thy word is true. Well, it's a thick book. I mean, all them words are God's words. And you find God saying something there, just make a decision. I'm going to agree with it. That's right. It don't feel right. It don't look right. It don't sound right. Glory to God. But you know God can't lie. And he said so you work with that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just tell the truth if it slips out of all. Just go ahead and agree with the truth. We make mistakes and sometimes we, you know, we don't want people to know we made the mistake and so we lie about it. Well, if you made a mistake, own up to it. Just own up to it. All they, all they can do is holler at you. In this country, other countries, they shoot you. Well, how bad is that? You'd go to heaven. <laughs> Might not be my first choice right now, but uh, tell the truth. Tell the truth. All right. Revelation chapter 21. If you will, please. Nana kind of touched on this a while ago. She didn't know what I was doing today, but she uh, talked about overcomers. 
we're going to look at that thought here for just a few minutes, I think. Revelation chapter 21. <coughs> And to find out where I'm going, we'll get there. Revelation 21, verse 6. <clears throat> John said that the, that, the, that the Lord said unto him, said, He said unto me, it is, it, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega. He said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. You about to say that? Yeah. We were listening to somebody preaching on TV last night or night before last, just recently, when it was, but. Uh, uh, oh, it was a song somebody was singing in, in a church service. And uh, I hear people say it all the time. They were singing this. That the Bible, you know, They were singing that, that, that Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says he is Alpha and Omega. What difference does it make? I don't know. It's just the word the ain't in there, and people put it in there. It goes on in the rest of the verse using the word the, I think, but it just isn't listed there when he says Alpha and Omega. I think it's just important for me to quote the word right. Yes, amen. Is that right? Yeah. He said to me, it is done, I am Alpha and Omega. Then it says, you, the word the is there, the beginning and the end. I mean, there's no big deal. It's just the word the ain't listed with Alpha and Omega. And we put it there, but that's neither here nor there I don't give. Just an observation I made. Glory to God. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Which is one reason people are not doing any better than they are in the world we live in, because they're not thirsty for God. They're not hungry for God. They're feeding and drinking off of something else. Verse 7, He that overcometh shall inherit all things. Does your Bible say that? Yes. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. And I read that, and I thought, overcome what? He that overcometh, overcome what? And it's kind of like, well, just keep reading, you'll find out. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. They're listed there, what the Bible tells you and I to overcome. And I just kind of went down through here and made a little study on each one of them. The fearful and the unbelieving. Uh, there's, there's people, we're not sitting in these chairs because they're afraid of a different lifestyle. They're comfortable in the lifestyle that they're in and they're, they have a fear of getting out of that. Fear of stepping into something else. If not and I let fear guide our steps, we don't ever done anything over the years. But I don't know how many times we packed up and moved because the Lord said, sell your house, move over there, move over there, move over there. Go to this school. Go to that school. The Lord is continually leading us to get out of our comfort zone. And the next thing you know, why don't you step up in that pulpit? No, Lord, I ain't doing that. And my thought, <laughs> I didn't say that. Because that's sure enough getting out of your comfort zone. I want you to go knock on that door down there and tell them people that I love them. No, I ain't doing that either. Because the fear of stepping out of my comfort zone and the Lord said, you overcome the fear. The overcomer will inherit all things. I'll tell you something, it takes a level of faith and commitment to go knock on somebody's door. You don't know what's behind that door. You don't even know the people. You don't even know their name. I mean, they may be raving lunatics in there, just twirling a 357, sitting there and watching TV. <laughs> you don't know what's behind that door. This guy told me one time he's sitting in his truck and he's twirling his gun, twirling around, and he said he shot himself. Twirling the gun. I said, what was it? Self-defense? <laughs> Wrong thing to say. <laughs> Mouth got involved for my brain never got involved. That kind of calmed him down. <laughs> he didn't like that comment at all. Uh. He's, he's a good friend of mine, but he didn't like that comment. But fear is something that will stop you every time you turn around. If you let it. But I tell myself on a regular basis, I'm a child of God or I'm not. We sang that song just every little bit. Uh, uh, I'm not a slave to fear because I am a child of God. Amen. But if you let fear control your steps, you'll never get out of your own shadow. What does that mean? I don't know. We can't get out of our own shadow anyway. <laughs> but we just don't let fear stop us. 
If fear had anything to say when we bought this property and started building this building, and building that building up there, and building a cafe down here, if fear never had its way, I'd have never touched a blade of grass here. Because all these lies show up. How are you going to pay for that? How are you going to pay for that? How are you going to? You don't even know how to build a building. You don't know how to wire a building. You don't know how to do plumbing. And you're going to have to pay somebody contractor wages to get that done. And it's going to cost you at least $5 million. That fear element just talking every step we make. But I'm not moved by fear. I refuse to let fear dominate or control my steps. I refuse to do that. I like what Joyce Meyer said one time. She said, just do it afraid, but do it. <laughs> Whatever it is you, you feel led to do, just go forward. Amen. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I overcome fear because God said fear has no place in my life. Now, there's a healthy fear of heights and that sort of thing. If you just can't keep your balance up on the edge of a two before 500 feet in the air, you probably better stay off the thing. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Don't walk around the edge of cliffs. I mean, unless the Lord tells you to. If He tells you to, well, fear has no place in that. That'd be a rare thing for God to tell you to do something like that. I know people are just. They're just inherently balanced so that fear has no place. I mean, they build these skyscrapers in New York City and places like that, and they're up there walking around on four-inch beams, six-inch beams, and it's hundreds of feet to the ground. In the early days, they didn't have no OSHA laws of safety. They didn't have no rope tied to them. They weren't you know, chained to the building at all. And, and what those contractors used to do, that I, what I've heard anyway, they go to the Indian nations to find their workers because the Indians didn't have no fear. They just, they just majored on fearless. That's why they called them braves. And they just hire them, and boy, they'd skinny up about, I mean, five, six, seven hundred feet, thousand feet up there, just drilling and you know, putting bolts and rivets. A healthy fear of anything is, is probably not a bad idea. But just don't let it dominate your life. The Lord tells you to go build a skyscraper, go build one. Amen. Amen. Just don't let fear order your steps. Hallelujah. The fearful. People won't come out of their house to come to church down here because all the lies they've heard about me. and Boy, there's been a bunch of them out there. John Scalf, he, he invited somebody in Jasper to come be in church over here with us. I don't know, I don't know what, I don't know how stuff gets started. I mean, people have to sit around and make it up. I am the most harmless thing on two feet. Well, I'm the most harmless thing on two feet. <laughs> but he invited somebody to come be in his church up at Jasper. They said, what church you go to? And they said, the Christian Center at Mountain Judy. No, I'm not going to that church. I heard about that pastor. What in the world did you hear? So people are, people are afraid. I've had people tell me that they're just trying to be humorous to say it, trying to get me to leave them alone. But uh, if I went out to that church house, the roof would fall in. I hear that a lot. I don't really got that in. The roof would fall in. Well, the Bible says, you fall over the Lord Jesus, you'll be broken. But he said, whoever I fall on, you can count on you. <laughs> the roof ain't going to be, that's the least of your problem. He said, you'll be ground to powder. I don't believe I want any of that, do you? No. Broken can be fixed. Powder's a hard thing to put back together. <laughs> I don't know it reminded me just saying I don't know why, but, but not in our covenant relationship. We're in a covenant relationship. Number one, I mean, we just got a, a verbal covenant when we got married. But it ain't been that long ago. Oh, two or three years now, maybe a little longer, I don't know. We did a salt covenant. You know what a salt covenant is? You just get you a little handful of salt, just a little bit of salt right here, and she gets a little bit of salt right there, and then you just mix them. And then, then you pick your salt out of that. <laughs> you take your salt out of that. Give her her salt back. Well, you can't do that. It's impossible. That's what a blood covenant is. You guys cut this little cut here and cut here, mingle that blood. Well, get your blood out of that. If you want to break the covenant, get your blood out of that. Well, you can. The covenant is permanent. It's for life. Right. Amen. You do, some people do bread covenants. I don't know what that is, but they do sugar covenants. It's the same thing. You know, but it's a mingling of two materials that can't be undone. 
By the way, she's the only one I got a covenant with. I know y'all know that. But you never know where that DVD is going to go. <laughs> Hallelujah. So one of the things is, 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 is don't be motivated or controlled by fear. I mean, just, you may just have all kinds of fear and trembling, but just go ahead and step out and do it anyway. Just go ahead and go forward with what the Holy Ghost is leading you and saying to you. Just go ahead and do it anyhow. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. And then there's this, there's this, uh, the unbelieving. The unbelieving. I was witnessing to another Christian, quote unquote. Well, it, I'm not, I'm, he's not my servant, so I'm, I don't know how to watch that. He says he's a Christian. He just goes to another church, different kind of church. And I was telling him about how I have been healed. There's, there's a thing that got healed in my body several years ago. Had been plagued by it off and on for years up until that time. And all of a sudden it just become unbearable what was going on in my body. And I thought, enough of this. I've had enough of this. And I got me a whole bunch of healing verses. And I just tore into the devil. And I mean just for three days. I just, just every waking moment. I was telling the devil what the Bible says about healing. And I mean I get mad about it by the day. And that left me. And has never come back. It's been years ago now. That left me and has never come back. Hallelujah. Anyway, I was telling this, this Christian friend, and he said, oh, I said, that would have went away anyhow. I said, you've got healed. People just get healed. You know, people get, you know, that just comes and goes. <coughs> I didn't say anything at the moment. I thought about it later. I wish I had it then, but that's why the Bible calls me a believer and you're an unbeliever. Well, I wish I'd have said that because that probably don't help nobody say that, but I thought that, you know. But we've been financially blessed. We've been physically blessed. Spiritually blessed. They told us in Bible school that the devil will try you on all three levels. Spirit, soul, and body. If he can't move you or motivate you by your spirit by dumping junk of a religious world into you or some other spiritual nonsense, if he can't control your life that way, he'll attack you in your flesh. And if he can't defeat you by some kind of disease in the body, he'll attack you in the soul. He said he'll try you on all three levels, trying to get you stopped in some, some fashion. And it's fear and unbelief. It's what he uses. Well, you know, you, if you don't go get a, you know, some kind of, you know, ain't nothing wrong with operations if you need one. But if the devil gets you over unbelief, he'll get you a key. Amen? Amen? He'll hurt you if he gets you an unbelief. You see, it's this word, and it's what God says in this word about your health that even makes doctors give validity to doctors. They do what they can, and then the Holy Ghost does the rest of it. The doctor cuts you open, but he can't heal. He can't make you heal back. That's what God does. That's right. The Lord told me one time when I had colon cancer, He said it doesn't take a knife to get rid of colon cancer, but it's going to take a knife to get rid of yours. So that's just a level I was on at the time. But I was trusting God every step of the way through it. And there was a lady named Farrah Fawcett. How many's ever heard of Farrah Fawcett? Yeah. Her dad's name was Henry Fawcett. He's in Westerns all the time. This little, little skinny, scruffy guy. Looks like one of them old time prospectors. Fairy Fawcett had, <coughs> she had colon cancer the same time I did. She's on the West Coast and I'm in Arkansas. Her millions of dollars that she had made in Hollywood and all the wealth that she had could not deliver her from colon cancer. And they buried her. I had the same disease. Today I'm live and well. Because I went in, I, she went to the doctor, I went to the doctor. It's just I went in there holding Jesus. I mean, I was hanging on to him. I drug him through every room in that hospital. <laughs> I ain't going through this without you, Lord. And he went through that whole thing with me. When I come out the other side, I mean, the pain wasn't there. The only pain I had was when they put that thing down my throat. I tore my tonsils out. Or something that felt like I'd been turned tied out in my throat with a tube down my throat. <laughs> but I didn't really have any pain at all out of that thing. And they said, come, you know, I'm going to set you up for all this chemotherapy. And I said, yeah, make me an appointment. Oh, you know, I never did tell them I was going to come back. But I didn't. I never went back. Never had no chemo or nothing. But unbelief will get you killed, guys. You put fear and unbelief together, and that's a dangerous combination. And we're told to overcome that. He that overcometh, and then it tells you in verse 8, the things are outlined one after the other that God expects his, his children, 
his people to overcome. Because if we don't overcome, what's the difference between your life and the life of any old sinner out there? Amen. Amen. The fearful and the unbelieving. It says, and the abominable. Well, you know, you can read, I, I'm not going to take the time, but the whole 18th chapter of Leviticus is one abomination after the other. One abomination after the other. And probably one of the greatest abominations in our day today is homosexuality. I don't care what they say. I don't care what law of man made. It doesn't change what truth is. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Mike Huckabee was talking about this, this, this cup that he knew. He said, he said, this cup said, well, we just, our son's five years old, and we just let him figure out whether he's going to be a man or a woman. He said, listen, let me help you out. He said, the first time you change a diaper, you're going to know which one he is. Man or a woman, male or female. Got a bunch of confused people raising children to their confusion. As the man running for president who is a homosexual, and my mind is, if he can be confused by his hormones, he's sure not going to get confused by world governments. Amen. I'm sorry, but I ain't voting for that guy. I mean, anybody can get right on the national TV and just hug another bearded dude up and kiss him right on the mouth. You know, they said, I'd just soon kiss a cow right in the lips as to kiss another man. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what he, that's what he said. Uh, amen, brother. I believe that. <laughs> uh, woo, glory to God. So you and I are called to overcome fear. We're called to overcome unbelief. We're called to, to, to put the abominable side. Let me, let me just show you something here. In, in Levit, not Leviticus, but uh, Deuteronomy chapter, what about it? Chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Holy place, we're going to come back to that. That uh, remark you Bible or somewhere or another, but look at Deuteronomy chapter 18. I just, I just, I made a fellow mad at me with this verse right here one day, and he was part of our church quite regular, not, not just real regular, but just every now and then he'd show up. And uh, when I showed him this verse and talked about it, he got mad and said, I ain't ever coming back here again. So he didn't. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Have you found it? Mm -hmm. Verse number verse number nine. Verse number nine. Hallelujah. I think it's what I want to look at here for just a minute. Verse number nine. When thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God give thee, and thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. So he's going to talk about some abominations here. There's a lot of things that's abomination to God. Men getting in bed with men's abomination. Women getting in bed with women is a, an abomination. And you don't even want to know what they told on Channel 3 News last night. Yeah. Nauseating. And they put out a disclaimer before, we, before they told it. They said, you might not want to hear this, but they said, this is just what happened. And I'm not even going to go there. But it's an abomination. <laughs> okay. Verse 10, there shall not be found among you anyone that makes his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Now, the fire they're talking about is offering their child to the god Molech. The, the, the god Molech was something man just made up. But it was an iron, it was a cast iron statue and had a big hole and big old opening here down here in the belly parts of it down here all the way to the ground they built a fire in there and then things just get red hot and he had arms like that right there just metal iron arms stuck out there like that and when everything got really hot they laid their babies on that and they fry them just fry the children there's a place over in Israel today they said there's millions of little baby bones out there where they buried them in an effort to get nature to give them a good crop and fertility and yada 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 just insane and so that's what it's referring to. The Bible says that's an abomination to God. He said, there shall not be found among you any that make their son or daughter pass through the fire. That's what I was talking about. Okay? Or that use with divination. I would suggest you go burn your Ouija boards. Get rid of your 900 numbers. What, I don't know what all the 900 numbers are about. Them fortune tellers. There's a bunch of them fortune tellers went bankrupt on TV because they couldn't pay their TV bills. And somebody said, well, you think since they know the future? Well, they, are, they, probably, they should have seen that bankruptcy coming, <laughs> but they didn't see it. Amen. Or an observer of times. Well, you, you just have to do a study here to get what all that's talking about. Or an enchanter. Don't be a witch. Okay? Verse 11. Or a charmer. Don't be a charmer. People charm snakes. Well, you can charm a snake if you want to, but you're fixing to get bit. 
or a consulter with familiar spirits. That's what they do every time they have a seance. They're consulting with familiar spirits. Grandma died, but there's a familiar spirit that knows every minute detail about Grandma. And that thing shows up right in the middle of that seance and just tells those only Grandma thing, only stuff that Grandma would know, oh, it's got to be Grandma. Nobody knows that but her. No, that familiar spirit knows everything about her. That's where, that's where reincarnation comes from. Oh, there's a familiar spirit. There's a spirit around with old King Doodad, like 1695. And, 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 and that spirit knows everything about that old king. Well, like a thousand years later, this little girl was playing in the backyard, and all of a sudden she knew all the intimate details about that king. And so everybody said, well, that king's been reincarnated to her. No, it's just that familiar spirit got to talk to the girl. Just leave from here, spirit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a Delmer Bowling story. He won't mind me. He's already going to heaven. He can't with me. <laughs> he said he was sitting in a church in Kansas City. This is his story. I mean, this is a good one. He's sitting in a church in Kansas City. He just come off the street. He's sitting in the back seat back there. This wasn't all that big a church. But he said they up here in this altar, a lot of people praying. This, this girl down there praying. They, they just laying hands and praying. And I mean, a whole lot of praying going on. And he said, I sat there and watched that. And he said, there could this girl stood up and walked down this aisle and went out that door and went up the street. And he said, I went outside to see which way she went. And she, he told what direction up the street she went. And he said, he come back in and sat down the seat and said, that girl was standing in that altar and they're still praying. Mm -hmm. A familiar spirit just left her. Looked just like her. Walks just like her. Talks just like her. Hmm. The familiar spirits. They can tell you stuff about your great, great, great grandpa that you have no idea about. But they know great, great grandpa intimately. It's abomination for the realm of him. Or a wizard, it says. Or, now, the last thing listed there in that, in that verse 11 is the necromancer. See necromancer? See that word necromancer? A necromancer is somebody that prays to the dead. Somebody that prays to the dead. Why would anybody want to pray to a dead person? But do you know there are millions upon millions of people as we speak are praying to a dead person today? I told this individual, I said, Mary's dead. <coughs> Jesus' mother is dead. We can find her bones today in Israel if you just knew where to go look. They're there. <coughs> I said it's an abomination to God. Verse 4, no, excuse me, verse 12, for although that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. It's an abomination unto the Lord to pray to the dead. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And so they pray this prayer, Hail Mary, full of grace, and well, I don't know what the prayer is, but they're talking to Mary. And then they ended with saints preserve us. And they prayed to Peter and they prayed to Paul and they prayed to all the saints that died and gone. They're praying to the dead. And it's the Catholic religion, but that's between them and God. I'm not, not my place to criticize because I'm not their judge. I just know the Bible says to pray to a dead person is an abomination. If words mean anything at all. Amen? Amen. <coughs> the whole nation of Japan, by and large, pray to dead. They believe in ancestral worship. They go and put Granny and Grandpa's picture on this wall and, and they light all these incense things and, and burn incense and they bow down and bow down you know, they're and they're praying to Grandma and Grandpa. They're praying to a dead person. Now they're the thing in the world talking about, I mean, wrong with talking to a memory. Go to the cemetery and talk to your memory. But to petition that dead person for anything is an abomination to God. I mean, go to the cemetery, Mom, I miss you so much. I love you. Dad, I wish you were here. I mean, those thoughts come, but you're in it. It's talking to yourself. And you're talking to a memory. But to pray to that person in that grave to get heaven's response is an abomination. Amen. A necromancer is praying to dead people. Mary is a dead person. Peter, James, John, Paul, all them guys are dead. But there's a lot of people that pray to those dead people. Amen? Amen? I showed that verse to an individual. Boy, he just didn't like that at all. Because he grew up from an infant in that belief system. And all of a sudden it was challenged. Well, he didn't get, you know, he didn't get sideways with the word. He got sideways in the middle of the message. He got sideways with the messenger. He just got upset at me and adios. Well, all right. Revelation 21, if you've got your place to mark there. 
He that overcome, verse 7, he that overcome shall inherit all things. But the fearful, we overcome fear. The unbelieving, we overcome unbelief. We look at a promise, we look at a promise, and we just keep looking at a promise until that's what faith comes in. Amen. And we overcome the unbelief concerning that promise. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we overcome abominable things, one of which is praying to dead people. In other words, it's homosexuality. And, 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 and just, I mean, it just goes on. There, there, there's just all kinds. Of, just read Leviticus chapter 18 just in your, in your quiet time. It's just one thing after another listed down to there. And said, he that overcomes shall inherit all things. And one thing listed is murderers. Well, brother, yeah, you don't ever catch me murdering anybody. I wouldn't murder nobody. You wouldn't believe at the attempted murders every day of the world in Christianity. I was I was driving down the street up in Tulsa in a, in a freight truck, and I'm every freight hauler in the world late. He thinks he is. If you get in his way, boy, you're just inviting trouble. <laughs> so I'm going down that street. I'm just on the brake and on the gas, and I'm on the brake and on the gas because there's a fellow right in front of me on a bicycle. Going down that street, and I'm right behind him. I don't know if he knew I was back there or what. I mean, he could not know I was right behind him. And directly, I just muttered. I just muttered it. I just mumbled it. Bud, you're going to get killed out there. That was attempted murder on my part. And the Lord, I didn't even know he was in the truck. <laughs> he come from over in this other seat when I heard very loudly. Stop speaking death over that man. Whoa. <laughs> just, just that loud inside that truck. Well, I got a revelation. People are murdering people all the time. Speaking death over them. Speaking death over them. And our words carry power. Amen. There was a lady called Kenneth Hagin to come to her house and pray for her husband. He said, he's a dying. He needs prayer. And so he came to that house and he was praying and praying and there wasn't nothing changing. No way. It wasn't sensing God doing anything. And directly he heard the Holy Ghost say, he said, if you don't get her to quit saying what she's saying over him, he'll be dead in two years. Hmm. He, the Lord told him, said, her words are killing him. Hmm. And he turned around and told her what the Lord just told him. Well, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I ain't saying nothing wrong. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, it ain't me. It's, he's got a problem. He said two years to the day they buried him because she wouldn't quit saying what she was saying over him. Hmm. People read that and they think about, well, somebody shouldn't, you know, shouldn't get a gun and go out there and just go shoot people. Well, you shouldn't. And that certainly would include just murderers, but they're just driving vehicles through crowds and, I don't know, how many different ways you poison, you know, all kinds of things you can do to commit murder. But they never stop to think how they kill people with their words. When the Lord told me to stop speaking death over that man, immediately I saw all the accidents on the highway. Granted, as they meant well, they said, that boy's going to get killed. Every time he gets in that car, he takes off going down the road, sliding side. He's going to die. I know he's going to get killed after one of them old cars. He's going to get killed. They're going to find her dead in the alley one of these days, taking them drugs like that. And they just speak death over. They don't mean to. They don't do that consciously. But we're told to overcome this thing of murdering people. Amen. It's just as easy to speak life over them as death. Won't we just say, you know, that may try to kill my child, but he can't. He ain't gonna kill my kid. Amen. Amen. Car or train, plane or rocket, <laughs> he's not gonna kill my child. But we speak after the emotions and after the feelings, and we're releasing death over people's lives. And the Bible tells you and I to overcome that. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. Let me show you a verse over here in uh, about Luke chapter 16. Hold your place here. I'm going to come back to this in just a minute or two. Well, I'm going to have to close. It's, it's 12 o'clock, but go with me to Luke. I get caught up in the Word sometimes, guys, and I, I lose track of time. I'm going to give me a little clock set there so I can keep up now. Luke chapter 16. Praise the Lord. Verse number 13. If you found it, say amen. 
Amen. Amen. Well, that ain't the verse I want. Hang on. It's Matthew chapter 5, I'm sorry. I've got several verses up here now. Lose track where I'm at on the notes. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 4 about Verse 21. Well, let's just read it. When Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, if I got my text right here, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And verse 22, it said, Behold, there come one of the rulers of the synagogue. And that's not it either, because I'm in Mark. Well, let's start with them. Those of you really spiritual people already know where I was anyway. I didn't think I ever sent her that. I'll get there, guys. Stay with me. Are you in Matthew? Amen. All right. I believe that's where I'll be at. Verse 21. Red letters in my Bible. It says, You've heard. You've heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Did your Bible say that? Mm -hmm. Verse 22. He said, but I say to you that whosoever be angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Now you put them two verses together and you're committing murder, the level of murder. You're committing something on the level of murder by being angry with a brother without a cause. Well, who in the world would do something like that? Well, there's personality conflicts all the time. People just don't like other people. Just because this will happen. It's a personality conflict. Well, more times than not, God will put them through the same people in the same church. And the reason he does that, he's trying to get those rough edges knocked off one another. But the fellowship working here and the word working here, so they get to loving one another. But when personality conflicts are doing what personality conflicts do, they leave where they're at saying horrible <laughs> things over one another. And the Bible says the judgment that you get for killing somebody would be the same judgment you get for being angry with somebody without a cause. If you got a cause being angry with somebody, that's one thing. Jesus got angry. But just because you don't like something. I just don't like the clothes they wear, I don't like the way they comb their hair, and I don't like the car they drive, and I don't like, I don't like, I don't like. <laughs> and you go speaking negative words over them, death-filled words over them. If words mean anything at all, it's the same thing as murdering. Because it opens the door up with your words. Let the devil come in and do what the devil does. Y'all see that in the Bible? Yes. Hallelujah. I'll end this, I'll end this thing this morning with this, with this thought. When we were out there in Oklahoma, uh, Faith Christian Fellowship was the church we attended. And uh, Dr. Jerry Gross was a pastor, under pastor associate pastor of Lady Harrison. But anyway, pretty good size of the congregation. But uh, there was a fellow come in there right in the middle of the church service one day and you could smell him when he come to the door. I mean, he hadn't been around water in a while. <laughs> his clothes was horrible. And his, he needed a bath bath. But everybody watched. They watched the head usher because man, things were done pretty strict. Something come in that wasn't right. The head usher took care of it. And so everybody wanted to know how the head usher was going to handle this. And they watched him get this head usher, never forget that day. He had a shark skin suit on. I mean a shiny high dollar suit. The head usher did. And he got up and he went back there for that bum. <laughs> Hobo. What do you want to call him? I don't know. He just hugged him up to himself. He got a hold of him and just embraced him. Kissed him on the neck. Just hugged him up and just loved him every way he could be loved. As far as two men could go, that's what he did with this man. He didn't know the fellow. He didn't know it mattered, but he knew God died for that man. And it wasn't long during the service that, that they got him saved. Got, the, got that old man, got that hobo, whatever he was, got him born again. 
which is pretty remarkable in itself. But two weeks later, that same hobo guy person was sitting on the edge of a lake out there in Oklahoma, fishing or what it was he was doing. And he had a grandma's seizure and filled the water and drowned and died. Mm. Went to heaven. But you can immediately see what human nature could have done with that. Somebody get that guy out of here. I mean, goodness, he just fouling up the whole area, you know. Somebody take him back in the back room somewhere or another. Just get him away from us holy people. <laughs> Instead of watching a lot of hateful stuff over somebody, I mean, they've not handled life right, and because they hadn't, life has not been good to them. But rather than speak death filled words over him, they've spoke life over him. They spoke life over him. Got him saved. Got him filled with the Holy Ghost. I think for him with him. Oh, Just a short time later, he died and went to heaven. Folks, don't let human nature rule your day. Let God nature, let the nature of the Word, nature of the Spirit of God rule your thoughts for other people. I messed up. I feel I did. Nana says I did. She talked to this lady, all she knew how, that came here just recently, but she was of a crazy doctrine, man. I don't know what it was. I think she had all kinds of devils. I don't know what it was. I missed it big time. Man, I feel bad. She said, can we just talk? But she was trying to sell me her ideas about things. And then she wanted to talk about transhumanism. And I said, if you don't have a chapter and verse for that in the Bible, it's a bunch of nonsense. And I was probably a little more rough with that than I should have been. But I should have just said, I didn't say that. We didn't go sit down and talk. But I just, she needed, her hand needed, his all messed up. She needed healing. Jesus died and hurt as much as he did any about on this planet. Amen. And I should have just took a minute, went and sat down with her and talked with her. And, 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 and she proves herself to just be totally opposite to the Word of God. That's one thing. But I didn't give her that opportunity. Man, I felt bad about that. Still, I'm still repenting over that one. Uh, I, I at least haven't done as bad as Kenneth Hagin did one time. The Lord told Kenneth Hagin to tell a guy he's going to go to hell if he doesn't get saved and get, get right with God. And Kenneth Hagin talked himself out of it and didn't go. And he said, I heard that man screaming and hollering as he went into hell. He said, he went there because of my disobedience. I mean, Dr. Hagin made that statement. Well, don't let you, don't think let you live a life there. That is grace. You just go to grace, pour out your heart, empty your heart, and just go on pure mercy and grace. And God will work with that. But there's a soul that was lost. Folks, do your best to respond to the Spirit of God when people. When you're around people, you need to stop and ask yourself, is, is there a God moment here or not? Is there something I need to do here or not? There's an opportunity there. I've been known to let those opportunities get by me. I get so busy doing something. I was working up very hard doing something other, and I was all sweaty and I was hot and I was tired. And I mean, I was trying to hurry and get this, this, that, and something else done. And, and that moment came and went, and it suddenly dawned on me. That's my whole purpose of being here as people. And I let one get by me. I let her get by me. And I administered to her all she knew how, but I don't know what, what voice she put into her. But Redeem the time when you're around people, amen. When you have something on the inside of you that people need so desperately, the grace of God, the peace of God, the love of God, the, 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 the new birth, I mean, the salvation, we have that, and they need that so desperately. <coughs> Hallelujah. Well, that's my message for this morning. Y'all get anything out of that today? Amen. Those of you by the internet or by DVD, we are Mount Judea Christian Center in Mount Judea, Arkansas. I'm Pastor Gary Johnson, my wife, Nina. If you need to call somebody, I'd like to call somebody. The number's on the, on the wall behind me back there, 1-870-434-5574. If you just need to talk to somebody, call that number. We will call you back if we're not at the phone. But we got some material we'd like to send you on the new birth, who Jesus is, what, what Jesus has done for you. We'd love to give that to you. No cost. We'll, we'll, pay the, we'll pay the postage. But listen, if you want to get right with God, if you just think you might want to get right with God, if you think you just might want to go to heaven instead of hell, that thought ever occurs to you that you want to do that, 
you're going to have to invite the Lord Jesus into your life. It's not complicated. It takes about 60 good seconds to get it done. Just, just repent of your old sorry life that you've been living. It ain't helped you at all. I mean, you, life has not been good to you. Fear and worry and stress and all that crazy stuff, sickness and disease. Okay? If you want that to change, invite the Lord Jesus to come into your life. And he'll come. The Bible says he'll make a new person out of you. He'll be born again. And the word tells you now to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died and was raised from the dead and you claim him as your Lord and your Savior. It's real simple. Just believe in your heart and confess with your mouth Jesus Christ as your Lord. And tell somebody you did it. The Bible says if you confess Jesus before men, he will confess you before the angels. He'll confess you before the Father. But if you just want to go to hell, don't worry about it. Just do nothing and you'll get there. But if you ever have any hope, of avoiding hell and having an eternal life in heaven and, a, and a, just a great future and a great hope. There is no other name under heaven whereby you can be saved but by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care what Buddha and Bahamut, all them other guys are telling you, they're lying to you. Amen. Invite Jesus into your life. Do it today. Don't put it off. Amen. Amen.